It's always Thank good you. to see a fellow Texan before the committee. My first question for you is a pretty simple one. Uh, do you believe there is such a thing as, quote, settled science, that being a time when scientific inquiry is no longer required, when questioning is no longer required, when experimentation uh, is no longer necessary? Senator Cruz, it's good to meet you. Thank you for that question. Um, the, the, the enterprise of science is one of inquiry, and over time there are fields where uh, the scientific consensus emerges. It's been tested under a broad set of circumstances, and it's, it, it, it starts to feel immutable. It never really fully is, but uh, that is the nature of scientific inquiry, is to continue to ask those questions and to examine uh, any topic from all perspectives. Well, I agree with that, particularly the last point you just made, that it is the essence of science to question, and, and history is replete with all sorts of instances of quote, scientific consensus being categorically wrong. And the mantra of settled science is often a mask for a political agenda to prevent scientists from asking questions that are inconsistent with the political agenda. We know that, that it was once settled science uh, that the Earth was the center of the universe and Galileo was a heretic for daring to question other words. It was settled science less than 200 years ago that hand washing did nothing to, to prevent the spread of disease, that everyone knew disease was caused by an imbalance of bad air or evil spirits. And so settled science has a way of shifting. And, and I would note just a couple of months ago, the Biden administration's assistant secretary for health, Rachel Levine, all but said that the science surrounding, quote, gender-affirming care was, quote, settled specifically, and the quote was, quote, there is no debate in the medical community about the medical or scientific validity of gender-affirming care. And gender-affirming care is a euphemism uh, for all sorts of policies that, that with young children can involve puberty-blocking drugs, that can involve at extreme levels, surgeries that permanently alter their reproductive ca capacity, their capacity for the rest of their life. Do you think it's accurate that, that questions such as that are settled science and no one is, is, is even allowed to ask what are the consequences of an eight-year-old child being given severe drugs that alter their physiology for the rest of their life? Uh, Senator Cruz, I think you're, you are talking about um, a, an area that is quite complex. I think gender in, is actually, I think, uh, complex in ways that are surprising to many people. And uh, my, my view on this matter is that fundamental to this topic is uh, respect for the individuals uh, who are involved. And I would keep coming back to that as... Okay, uh, okay, but you're, you're not answering my question. Do you believe it is settled science and, and thus it is unacceptable to ask questions about the impact of a child of administering severe life-altering drugs at very young ages? Do you think that is settled science and nobody is allowed to question it? Senator, that's an area that's, again, very complex. It's not one that I have deep personal familiarity with. It's one that I would want to learn a lot more about. To okay, so to you're refusing to answer, answer that. But like, it ought to be a really easy, of course, you can ask questions about what's the impact of giving life-altering drugs to kids. That, that is not a complicated, I can tell you, if I go home to Texas and I get 100 people in a room, I promise you 99 of them will say, well, of course we ought to ask a question about that. I find it amazing that you're nominated to be a cabinet level position as the president's science advisor, and you're not even willing to acknowledge that asking questions about the long-term physical and emotional health to a child, asking those questions is okay. Senator, I think you're talking about some issues that certainly require a lot more thought and... and uh, okay, unfortunately, what you're demonstrating here is that politics is more important than science because they're obvious science and medical questions. Let's shift to another topic. OSTB has done a lot of work under President Biden on energy and climate, and, and there may be no area of science that is more politicized than energy and climate. Of the almost 200 nations on planet Earth, 
which nation has reduced its CO2 emissions by the greatest number of total tons over the last 15 years? Uh, Senator Cruz, I, uh, I would probably want to look at the data to give you a complete answer to that. I know the U.S. has been uh, very good at reducing our emissions after having a long history of being the greatest emitter. Okay, uh, the, the complete answer is the United world. States of America, which has reduced our CO2 emissions by more than 600 million metric tons in the past 15 years. And my last question, because my time has expired, what is the principal cause of the United States leading the world in the reduction of CO2 emissions? And there, there is an objectively correct answer to this. Um, Senator, from my recollection of looking at the shifts in uh, U.S. emissions, they have come about, I believe, from a combination of uh, efficiency improvements, of shifts in manufacturing, uh, and of uh, the adoption of renewables. Okay, that question is, that answer is scientifically false. The answer for the principal cause of the reduction of CO2 emissions is the substitution of natural gas for coal in the production of electricity. That is objective, it is scientific fact, and it is dismaying to me that your answer to this committee is the political answer rather than actually talking about science and data and facts. And it also explains why the Biden administration has a relentless hostility to natural gas, even though it is the principal driver of carbon reductions. That is not science, that is politics, and frankly, it's bad politics. Senator Rosen. 